I'm sitting in a chair in my hotel room in Florida because I overheard a conversation at the restaurant in the lobby and I had to come up here and shoot a video about it. Yeah, that's my room. Not really that messy yet, but this is only the first time I'm going to be here for four nights. Anyways, the conversation I heard was two people at the bar talking about investing and they were talking about real estate investing versus stock market investing. And both of them were so convinced that investing in the stock market is a better investment than investing in real estate. I almost got up and went over and talked to them and had a civil conversation about it, but it is only four o'clock in the afternoon. I hadn't had any Tito's yet. So I decided to come up here and make a video about it. And as always, I started doing a little bit of research and I saw that there are a lot of people that think the stock market is a better investment than real estate. So what I'm gonna do is have an objective look at this. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of investing in the stock market. I'm gonna talk about the pros and the cons of investing in real estate. And I'll let you make the decision in which one you think's better. However, the baseline idea I wanna get across is you need to invest some way or somehow. You're actually literally losing money if you have a lot of money in your bank account. Of course, you should have some money in the bank. If you have a lot of money in your bank account, you are literally losing money with inflation because as inflation goes up, the dollar loses value. Therefore, it's not making any money. First, let's talk about the stock market. Let's talk about some pros and then some cons before we move on to real estate. Before I get rocking too much in this video, make sure to please hit that like button. I would really, really appreciate it. The first reason I see as a big positive to invest in the stock market is liquidity. It is very, very easy to get your money in and out. You can invest and have your money fully in the stock market making money, or I guess losing money in a matter of a day or less. And you can also get your money out. Sometimes it takes, you know, a couple of days to get your money out, but that is extremely liquid. It's not quite as liquid as an ATM usually or your bank account. However, you can get money in and out pretty quickly. Not all investments are like that. Number two is kind of a play on number one, but it's speed and variety. You can invest right away. You can download an app and invest in the stock market really quickly with real estate. You don't always have to use your own money. However, you have to do things that take time, whether you're wholesaling, flipping, or renting. Things take time to develop and things take time to especially make money in real estate. So it's much quicker to invest in the stock market. And there's also a pretty big variety. You can invest in a lot of different types of stocks and you can invest in a lot of different companies as well as you can invest, you know, small amounts here or there. So there's a lot of speed to stocks and there's a lot of variety as well. Number three is it can be extremely passive. And I would suggest it being passive if you're going to invest in the stock market. You don't really have to do anything besides watch your money grow. If you're going to day trade, I would not suggest that. We'll get that to here in a minute, unless you're going to focus your entire, even if you're going to focus your entire attention on it, I would not suggest doing that. So it is extremely passive. You put your money in, you let it sit. Maybe you add to it every week or every month, or maybe you have certain, you know, markers you want to hit before you take money out. But other than that, it is extremely, extremely passive. Number four, and I guess this is a positive, is you can invest as little as you want. You can invest a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks in the stock market, or you can invest a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, which I would not suggest doing. However, you don't have to have a lot of money to invest a lot of money. Now, I would probably want to point out the fact that if you put $100 in the stock market, that's great, but you're not going to make a ton of money. Even if you double your money in a year, which is not unheard of, but not very common, you're still only making $100. So the less you put in, the less you're going to make, but you don't have to put in a ton. All right, let's go on the cons of investing in the stock market before we move on to real estate. Number one is it is extremely volatile. Now it's not usually going to lose half its value in a week like crypto has been known to do over the past several years. This is not a crypto video. I've done some, I'm going to do more in the future. However, it can be pretty volatile and you don't really have control over that volatility. It can go up and down pretty drastically in a matter of a week or two weeks or a month if certain things happen in the company you're investing in. Number two, I alluded to a little bit earlier, is a lot of people make some money investing in a few stocks or they hit one and kind of catch the upswing of it and then they try to become professional investors or day traders on the side. I would not suggest this for anybody. You have to really, really learn a lot and algorithms and track things and spend a crap ton of time watching trends and watching the market and learning about the market. Even those people that do that and have that time are still wrong quite a bit. So that, that urge, that temptation to kind of have house money, almost like gambling, part of the reason why the house always wins at casinos is, you know, if you're playing blackjack and you're up a grand, 
hey, it's money I didn't have anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and bet on it till I lose it. People kind of similarly do that with the stock market at times if they try to become professional day traders. Number three is higher taxes. You're gonna pay taxes on your gains if you pull them out in the stock market. We'll get into that in real estate here in a minute, but you're gonna have to pay a lot of taxes on your gains. So even if you make a good chunk of money and you wanna pull it out, you're gonna have to pay a good amount of taxes on that money, depending on you know a few different factors. It could be a lot, but regardless, it's gonna be way more than real estate. Number four, I kind of talked again about earlier is if you wanna make substantial money, which leads me into real estate, what well, I'm assuming you want to make substantial money and you want to become financially free and become wealthy, it takes a lot of money to do that in the stock market. If you invest $10,000 now, in 30 years, it could be worth $100,000. That's awesome, but that's $100,000, okay? And that's assuming everything went extremely, extremely well. I'm talking about creating wealth and creating financial freedom. It's pretty hard to do in the stock market unless you invest wisely and already come from money. If you have several hundred thousand dollars and put it in the right stocks, it can help grow your wealth. But if you don't have several hundred thousand dollars, the stock market's not really gonna create wealth. It can create passive income for you. It can create passive losses for you. It can create some additional income and some additional monies, but it's not gonna create wealth unless you're putting a lot in the market, if that makes sense. Speaking of creating wealth, let's talk about real estate. As you can see in my synopsis of the stock market, it's not a bad investment per se. It can definitely be a good investment. I have some money in the stock market. I have some money, you know, in a few different things like that but it is just a diversification play for me. It's not a way to create wealth. And on this channel and all the stuff I put out, I'm about creating wealth and creating financial freedom. So if that's what you want, then you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this section because unless you already come from wealth, you're not gonna create wealth in the stock market. It's just gonna be a little bit of extra income for you, even if you do well, but if you wanna create wealth, real estate's the way. There's five main pros that I can see for investing in real estate. I didn't wanna make this an hour long video. There are more, but I'm gonna show you my top five and then we do have a con there at the end as well. Number one is you have a competitive advantage if you're investing in your local market. I'm not gonna talk about wholesaling or renting or flipping or go into too much detail about types of real estate investing, but if you know your local market, you have a huge leg up on the competition, on other type of investing. It's almost like insider trading but with real estate. If you worked for a company or someone at a company knew something was happening or saw a trend and told you about it, that's very illegal. Talk to Martha Stewart. So those kind of things happen and sometimes you get caught, sometimes you don't, but that is 100% illegal to get that insider trading. In real estate, it's all about insider trading. You knowing trend lines or you talking to people on the ground in your market that you're living and investing in or even other markets, getting that inside information on what's going on in the market or what's coming up for sale soon at a discount or, or certain different strategies or certain things that are, are happening in that specific pocket, it's kind of like insider trading, but it's encouraged and it's something that a lot of the top investors do. The more you know about your market, it gives you a competitive advantage and it gives you a leg up on the competition or other people trying to invest because you know more or put in more hard work. So you're gonna be ahead of those curves and you're gonna really be able to potentially capitalize on that. Number two, and my favorite is leverage. You do not need any money to make a lot of money in real estate. I have a million videos on this on this channel, so I'm not gonna deep too down. I'm not gonna dig too much into this leverage topic. However, you do not have to have a lot of money or any money at all to make money in real estate. You can leverage, you can borrow money from people to buy real estate. And guess what? That real estate goes up in value. And if it's a good rental property, the rent that that property produces will pay that leverage, which, which is debt, it'll pay that down over time. And you can get cash flow all during the same time. You don't wanna borrow money to invest in the stock market. However, you can borrow money to invest in real estate. And if it's a good asset that you manage well, you didn't have to use any of your own money and you're owning a couple hundred thousand dollar, you know, house, you know, a few million dollar apartment complex without using any of your own money and you get all the benefits of that big property or of that house we're gonna talk about in a minute. Number three, I just kind of alluded to is you can get some tax benefits for investing in real estate. You can get a lot of benefits, three main ones I'm gonna talk about on the next pro, but you get a lot of benefits of a, you know, several hundred thousand dollar house or a few million dollar apartment complex without having to use your own money. And some of those benefits are tax benefits. There are a lot of benefits that go along with investing in real estate and paying less in taxes is one of them. There's depreciation, there's write-offs, there's a lot of different things that you can utilize to pay less taxes by investing in real estate. 
But just know that if you make $100,000 investing in real estate and you make $100,000 investing in the stock market, if you know what you're doing and you invested wisely, you're gonna pay a lot less or no taxes on that real estate compared to those stocks. Number four is, it's pretty steady and the volatility doesn't really matter as much in real estate. My real estate portfolio is going to do this. Hopefully we have a line on my finger. Over the next you know, 20 years, it's gonna go up, down, sideways, a bunch of different ways, but I'm not really losing money um, on my rental properties because the value of my rental properties doesn't matter as much. There can be some volatility in real estate. Yes, so wait, was volatile? No, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Got a video coming out very soon on what I think the market's gonna do in 2022, so stay tuned for that. However, even if the market does shift, as long as I'm collecting rent and paying my mortgage, which you can do in any market, up, down, or sideways, I will be fine. The value of my portfolio doesn't really matter as much in real estate as long as it goes up over time, which it will. The value of your stocks matters because that's how much money you're making. Number five is the passive wealth trifecta. I kind of alluded to this a little bit with some of the other ones, but let's just kind of wrap it all in a bow before we get onto the con. In real estate, your properties go up in value over time. Yes, they will plateau. Yes, they may dip here or there, but overall, real estate goes up over time. I'm doing research on a video now over the past 121 years. I started at 1900. Real estate goes up and down, dips a little bit, a couple major dips, but other than that, it goes way up. And I just alluded to earlier in the last pro, even if the market dips a little bit, if you're renting or investing wisely, that's okay. The passive wealth trifecta, the first part of it is your properties go up in value over time because that's what real estate does. The second part of it is your mortgages get paid down by your tenant. So properties going up in value, the tenants getting paid down by the mortgage. That spread is your equity, is your net worth, is your value that you can tap into. So that's two parts of the trifecta. The third part is cash flow. So you should be collecting cash flow above and beyond your expenses if you're investing wisely. So, so properties go up in value, the tenants pay the mortgage down, and you collect cash flow the entire time, a passive wealth trifecta. I make about six grand a day with that trifecta. The number one con and only con that I see for investing in real estate it's just more active. It does require work. You can hire out management of your rental properties. You can hire out crews to fix and flip. You got to put in the work and hustle to wholesale. Those are kind of the three main ways to invest in real estate. It does require work though. Even if you are hiring things out, it is much more active than the stock market. You have to keep track of things. You have to kind of be always looking to invest more if you want to create wealth. You always kind of have to be actively looking at things. Now you can get it to a point where you're spending just a few hours a week doing it on the side, which is nothing compared to the wealth you can create in real estate. Just know that investing in real estate is gonna be a little more active than investing in most other types of investment, including the stock market. But the returns and everything I mentioned should very, very much outweigh that. If you follow my content here on YouTube and you're following my TikTok and my Instagram and interested in my mentorship, check out the description below. But if you're following my stuff, I can help you kind of cut those corners and be more efficient. Is it gonna be some of your time? Yes, but I can help it be less of your time. If you're following me for free on my socials and definitely if you're interested in mentorship, hit me up about that so hope you learned a little bit if you did please subscribe to this channel I would really appreciate it I don't want to beg or anything but I put a lot of time and effort and research into these videos all for free to give you more quality information to help you make informed decisions about your wealth so if you appreciate that and or this video make sure you hit that like button already I mean goodness if you're still watching this video hopefully you've hit that like button and hit that subscribe and notification bell as I come out with a few videos a week and I go live usually once a week and answer questions so if you want to be a part of that and a part of my community, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. See you on the next one.